men do experience domestic violence also. Men are victims of stalking, they are victims of domestic violence, they are victims of sexual abuse, and they are victims of intimate partner homicide. Since we have focused on intimate partner homicide with female victims and healthy relationships in February in honor of Valentine's Day, I thought a good transition into March would be to focus on intimate partner homicide with male victims. So if you have ever wondered why women kill their husbands, boyfriends, or exes, this is the video for you. If you're new here, welcome. My name is April Hardy. On this channel, we talk about domestic violence, including how to break free from it and how to thrive after it. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm really glad that you're here. I have a short announcement really quick before we get started. I wrote a book called In Case I'm Murdered, What You Should Know About Stalking, Domestic Violence, Sexual Abuse, and How to Stay Safe. It's like a big sister taking your hand and walking you through some really difficult stuff. Whether you have already been through the difficult stuff or you haven't been through it yet. And I'm just going to walk you through so that you're prepared so that you can better handle something if it would happen. I want to let you know it will be available on Audible soon, hopefully. So then we will have a print version, an ebook version, and an audiobook version. I love audiobooks because I can listen to it when I'm doing other things. I'm so excited. I just wanted to let you know. Keep watching and I will keep updating and let you know when it's available. Okay, so while it doesn't get talked about much, women do murder their significant others and exes, or kill them at least. But some, some women murder them, period, plain and simple. In fact, I've noticed a lot of news stories about that in the last year or so, and that kind of piqued my interest, sort of made me want to be able to research it a little bit more. At the time that I was seeing this stuff, I was researching female victims, Female victims obviously are way more common at this point still than male victims, and that's why they get reported on all of the time, and that's why there are easier statistics and easier research available about female victims, because it happens a whole lot more. But that doesn't mean that the male victims aren't significant, and it doesn't mean that research shouldn't be done on why women kill their intimate partners. There is a prevailing theory that the biggest reason that women kill their intimate partners has to do with domestic violence. Most of the time, the theory goes, the women have endured domestic violence of some type and they either are killing in a moment of self-defense entirely or they kill them because they don't feel like they're going to ever be able to get free from this abuser otherwise. Maybe they have reached out for help and they haven't found justice there or whatever the case may be, but there's domestic violence in that way too. It's just not self-defense in that moment. That's the prevailing theory. We're going to look at a few different sources. I wish that there was more current research, so we're going to look at Everything from 1986 through 2019. I say everything from, but there's really not a whole lot that I was able to find because this isn't something that's well researched. So we're going to look at kind of over time what the research showed and what the general opinion is of why this stuff happens. So we're going to start, I'm doing this in chronological order, we're going to start with it's called Husband Wife Homicide, an essay from a family law perspective by Margaret Howard. And I believe this was written in 1986. She said that calculations based on FBI figures for recent years reveal that husbands are victims in 38 to 45% of spousal homicides and wives are victims in 55 to 62% of the cases. This is at that time. The other thing that I thought was really notable, other than just saying, okay, 24 years ago, 25 years ago, 
these were the statistics, roughly. The other thing that was really interesting that she noted in here that I haven't seen anywhere else but still sounds 100% relevant, if you ask me, is the place of occurrence was fairly consistent in spousal homicides compared to general homicides. So she said at that time, a third of general homicides would happen in the home, but actually 84% of spousal homicides or intimate partner homicide, whichever you want to call it, happens in the home. It's the most dangerous place when you have domestic violence and intimate partner homicide potential super dangerous. But even more so, it went a little further. The bedroom is, at this time, was the most lethal place for women of the spousal homicide uh, cases that this this woman was studying. 45% of the wives were killed in the bedroom compared to 23% of the husbands in the bedroom. On the other hand, kitchens were the most lethal place for the husbands where 40% of the husbands were killed compared to 19% of the wives. And some of that, probably a lot of that, has to do with the way that people killed their spouses. Women at that time, but it seems like it's consistent through the research to some extent, their biggest weapon of choice is a knife. And the easiest place to find a knife is in the kitchen. So women had a tendency to murder their husbands in the kitchen maybe when they're having an argument or something and it's really easy for them to pull a knife men on the other hand most commonly i believe still today murder with their hands a strangulation second i believe being gun but both of those the guy obviously because he's a part of the situation and a lot of times their firearms are located in the bedroom. So it makes complete sense that the women would be killed more there. So keep that in mind. I, I would say that with research current even, both of those are still true, or true enough for you to be cautious if you happen to be that sex in that room. The other thing that I thought was notable from her stuff was she had like a, a big section on wives as offenders. And so the report said that women made up almost half of the intimate partner homicide perpetrators. A lot more women kill their significant others than maybe you notice. She said 50% or close to half. She also noted that the wife often kills in self-defense. Um, the research that she was looking at said as many as 60% of the cases, the wife killed the significant other, the husband, in self-defense, as opposed to for men, it was only about 9% of the time that they killed their wife in self-defense. So I thought that was interesting. Also included in her study, she said that University of Florida researchers found that most of the women studied who had killed their husbands did so, quote, only after being subjected to prolonged physical and verbal abuse. And a point that I thought was really good to make was that this research shows, demonstrates, that wife abuse is dangerous for the man and the woman. Because obviously wife abuse can lead to the wife being murdered. But it also can lead to the man being murdered, either in self-defense or because she's tired of it finally. Or she doesn't feel like she can get away any other way. Any of those three. The point being that it puts his life in danger also, which is true, but I never really thought about it like that. Her paper says that they found that the women who turned on their mates during an attempt to escape never intended to kill them, only to prevent them from blocking their escape or from hurting them again. Most of these women did not have a history of violent behavior and for the most part, it was the first time that they had fought back against their attacker, against their batterer, their abuser. Nearly all of them called the police in an ambulance at once, and they didn't realize that they had critically wounded him until they were informed later that he was dead. So that was actually self-defense moments. There was no premeditation. She was just trying to get out. Uh, Dr. Elaine Hilberman, 
a psychiatrist who treats abused women, noticed that battered women build up high levels of anger, but they rarely experience that anger directly, or they rarely use that anger against other people. Aggression was most consistently directed against themselves with suicidal behavior, grotesque self images, alcoholism in a few, and self mutilation in one woman. That was what was put in there. But she found that women in abusive situations, yes, they do get angry about the situation, but they tend to blame themselves as if they're the reason that it's going on and they tend to hate themselves and self-destruct as opposed to putting it out there and using their anger on other people. In my experience, I would say maybe with the exception of lashing out at children because when you're dealing with all of that stuff, it's really easy to verbally lash out at people who are more vulnerable than you and happen to be around. So there's that one. And the U.S. Department of Justice put out two different documents, one in 1994 and one in 1995, that I wanted to look at just a little bit. The one in 1994, there was two points that I, I found were important in it. One, a male was the assailant in about two-thirds of family murders in 1994. And this document noted that black wives killed their husbands at about the same rate as their husbands killed their wives. So 47% of the black victims were husbands and 53% were wives or were women. And then for white people, it was 38% of the victims were husbands and 62% were wives. So a little bit bigger of an, a gap there. That's the only time I think in this whole thing that I noted race because everybody is important. But it was interesting that black women tend to lash back more than white women. And I, I think that's a cultural thing. I think that that's because white women are told to be quiet and be nice a little bit more than black women are. Not that I'm proud of them because obviously murder is not good. But in general, I tend to sometimes wish I was a little bit more like them. It's probably why I pointed that out, but murder's bad. <laughs> Definitely not encouraging murder. And then in the 1995 one, husbands were convicted more frequently than wives for killing their spouses. So they actually got convictions in court more often than the women did. But the reason for that was that more often women were acting in self-defense. That was what they found in 1995. In 44% of the women defendant case studies for this report, there was evidence that the husband had assaulted his wife at the time of the killing. There was 44%. Whereas for the husband defendant cases, 10% of the time, there was evidence that the wife had assaulted her husband right before the killing. Assaulted wives were convicted 56% of the time, whereas 86% of the time they were convicted if there was no violent provocation. So the juries tended to be a little nicer like 30% nicer if it was proven that the man had assaulted her before she killed him versus she just killed him, which I feel like is very fair. So one more thing in, in this study and then we'll move on. About 66% of the husbands who killed their wives had been drinking when they killed their wives compared to 37% of the wives. 22% of the husband defendants had been using drugs compared to 3% of the wife defendants. So women were statistically for this study, a lot less likely to be under the influence of something when the murder happened than the men were. Take that however you will. And then there was a study in Quebec done in 2012 and Tom Blackwell wrote about it. And it looked at intimate partner homicide in Quebec, Canada from 1991 to 2010, so 19 year range. In that amount of time, there were 276 total intimate partner homicides or spousal homicides. Of those 276, 42 of them were committed by women. So 234 were committed by men versus 42 by women. The study reported that of those 42 victims, 11 of those men had had histories of domestic violence. Nine had no history of violence and the other 17, they didn't know their histories of violence. 
from those numbers, I just gotta point out because this irritates me. From those numbers, Blackwell felt that it was good enough to state in the title of the article that he wrote that most weren't abused. To reiterate, 11 of them were definitely violent. Nine of them were not violent. And 17 of them, they didn't know whether they were violent or not. Definitely most of those women were not abused. Cause you can clearly tell that by the nine that were definitely not violent out of 42. It just seems a little subjective to me. But if you continued in that article, it seemed like the whole article was subjective. So the article included a quote from the study's co-author, Dr. Dominique Bourget, maybe? A forensic psychiatrist at the Royal Ottawa Mental Health Center. She said that women rarely gave a warning before killing their mates. In the vast majority of cases of women who killed their mates, there were very few indicators that might have signaled the risk and helped predict the violent lethal behavior. The article did point out that 80% of the intimate partner homicide in Canada from 2000 to 2009 were perpetrated by men, as well as almost all familicide. And familicide is when they killed the wife and the children together. It also talked about how research tends to tends to focus on that bigger number and therefore research doesn't focus on the female killers in these intimate partner homicide situations and I do agree with that. There's definitely a lack there. I understand why they do it but it needs to change because we need to have a, a clearer picture. Unfortunately as with other types of intimate partner violence a lot of the details are only known by the victim and the perpetrator. And that makes it really difficult to have good, accurate statistics for us to be able to base things on later. Now, if we're gonna look a little bit closer to this timeline, the New York Times put out an article in 2019 that talked about intimate partner homicide. And it basically said that after a, a little while of lower rates of intimate partner homicide were on their way back up. In 2014, it said that there were 1,875 reported intimate partner homicides. And then in 2017, the number of victims rose to 2,237. Now, of those 2,237 victims, 1,527 of them were women. And that article, the point of it was an awful lot of them were women, which I get. But that means that 710 of those were men and they matter too. Even if they were abusers and it was a self-defense thing, knowing that is important. And there's no way that all of them were. There just isn't. Men do experience domestic violence also. Men are victims of stalking. They are victims of domestic violence. They are victims of sexual abuse. And they are victims of intimate partner homicide. It's just that they're victims less often. And because they're victims less often, at least from what's known, then the research really lacks on their behalf. Now, intimate partner homicide's a little bit easier to research than like sexual abuse because a male can be sexually abused as a child and go his entire life with nobody knowing that if he so chooses. If he's murdered by his intimate partner, people are gonna know. It's gonna be pretty obvious, but he might not ever disclose sexual abuse. And that makes it really difficult for there to be accurate statistics and accurate information and Therefore, that makes it difficult to be able to create ways to help and to stop that stuff from happening. And it creates a stigma that men don't experience this stuff, that men can't be raped, etc., that are false. And the world needs to know that they're false. Intimate partner homicide tends to be a very male-dominated crime. 
because men historically tend to be more violent in a life or death type of way. But not always. So I'm gonna play some screenshots that I took of news articles that have happened recently of women perpetrating domestic violence homicide. And that's how we're gonna finish this out. I want to reiterate one more time, men can be victims too. They are, in certain cases, victims too. In 2017, 710 men were killed by their intimate partners. I would imagine the majority of those were women. I don't know if they are differentiating for like homosexual partners. I would just imagine that most of those are female. But 710 men and those lives matter. Am I as concerned about the ones that are abusers and it was self-defense? No, probably not. It's If it's self-defense, it's self-defense. But the rest of them, I'm, I have known some crazy women. And I have known some excellent men. And I have known some excellent men who have found crazy women. And they matter. So, if you guys have information on male victims in any regard as far as domestic violence, sexual abuse, intimate partner homicide, I would love it if you would email me, staff at aprilhardy.com, because I really would like to research that more. I really do feel like you guys get the short end of the stick. And please don't think that I'm super biased. I may have come off a little biased in this video because so many more females are murdered by intimate partners that are male than the other way around. But that does not mean that you're less valuable. It just means it's a smaller number and the research isn't good. So whether you're male or female, homosexual, straight, trans, any of the others, until I see you again, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I'll do my part to keep you safe by continuing to put out weekly videos about all things related to intimate partner violence. If you haven't already, please do your part by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification button so that you don't miss a single video. Bonus points if you share videos with people that you believe will benefit from the information. Until I see you again, stay safe.